And here's what the Bible says. It says that everyone lives forever. The question is where? Wow. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't care what you've been taught, what you believe, what you think. Here's what the Bible is very clear on. Is that everybody lives forever. The question is, is where? That all of us, we have two paths. Life, death, heaven, hell, blessings, cursings, truth, and lies. The question is not a matter of will we live forever? The question is where? See, everybody thinks that they are going to live forever. But the reality is, is that everybody in this room is going to die. Like that's, that's, that's what, that, what, science has proven this, okay? 100% of people who live die. I know you don't think you're gonna die, but every single person in this room will die. And so when you die, will you be ready for where you will spend eternity? That's what Peter is writing because here's the big idea is life is short, hell is hot and forever is a long time. So you need to make a decision on where you are going to spend your eternity. And when we teach on this subject of hell, some people in our culture, even those in the church, they're gonna push back and say, pastor, I don't like it when you preach on this subject. I don't like it when you talk about it because it's so unloving, it's so not like Jesus. Okay, well, let's just think about it for a sec. Who was Peter? Peter was the leader of the disciples. He was the first among equals. He was the pastor of the very first church. Peter knows Jesus better than you. Yeah. Okay? And so you're like, let's get to the red letters. Let's get to the red letters. These red letter progressive Christians. What, what does it say in the, the red letters? The red letters. Well, here's what we see in the red letters. Jesus talks about hell twice as often as he talks about heaven. 13% of Jesus' sermons and teachings were on the subject of hell. And he paints a very broad picture of what hell is going to look like. He says it is a place of eternal conscious torment and that there is weeping and gnashing of teeth of outer darkness where the worm never dies and the flame never ends. Like Jesus has some strong words when it comes to the subject of hell. And he says this as a warning because you don't want to go there and he doesn't want anyone to go there. And it's just like gravity. People are like, I don't want to talk about hell. I don't want to think about hell. Listen, it's just like like gravity. You can deny it. You can resist it, but you only do so to your own detriment because in the end, gravity always wins. In the end, God always wins as well. And so we're going to take a moment and we're going to learn a little bit about, does God send people to hell? But before we do, I got to do a little bit of theology. Okay. Here at Redemption, we love theology. We don't shy away from the deeper things of God. We love to study. We love God's word. We love to do a little bit of theology. Here's what we see statistically is that 75% of Americans believe in heaven. 75%. Now out of that 75%, 95% believe they're going to go there. That means only 5% of people think that they're going to go to hell. 5% of people, right? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but here's what they say. How do you get to heaven? Here's what they would say. Amongst research through Ligonier Ministries, they've discovered that the way in which they believe people go to heaven is this, is that by being a good person. You know how you are to be a good person? You have to compare yourself with somebody else. That's the only way you could be a good person, right? Turn to your neighbor and compare yourself to them. You're like, I'm better than you. You're like, nope, I, I know what you did last week, all right? I'm married to you. No way, no way. The only way you can be a good person is if you compare yourself to somebody else. But the Bible says we don't compare ourselves to other people. We compare ourselves to Jesus. And compared to Jesus, everybody falls short. Right? Jesus is God's standard, not the lowest common denominator you could think of. All right, so we're not saved by our good works, but rather we're saved by Christ's finished work on the cross. That's how we're saved. But in, in America, there is this growing misunderstanding of eternal life, heaven and hell. So let me give you a, a couple of ways in which uh, Americans tend to think of the afterlife. The first is this idea of atheism which would say there is no God, there is no heaven, there is no hell. When we die, we're dead. We turn into dirt and worm food. As Christians, we reject that. We believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. We believe Jesus is God, third, second member of the Trinity. We reject atheism openly. Number two is this idea of universalism. What that says is there is no such thing as hell and everybody goes to heaven. This is a heresy that has been rejected by the church for 2,000 years. It is growing in popularity here in our nation. But I want you to know something. Like if you believe this, you are a heretic. Right. Okay, go ahead and try that on for a little bit. It doesn't feel good, does it? If we'll take it off and get rid of it. <laughs> right? Universalism is a heresy that has been fought against by the church for thousands of years. 
The third is this idea of annihilationism. Okay, here's what they would say. That Christians go to heaven, non-Christians cease to exist. This is an idea where some people would pick and choose certain verses from the Bible and they would use it to justify themselves because they believe it is the more compassionate option. And I would just like to say to those, you cannot be more compassionate than God. Wow. And, and they're attempting to find some sort of synthesis between the two. How could a good loving God send people to hell? He wouldn't, therefore God just causes them to cease to exist and only Christians go to heaven forever. I don't hold to this position. I reject this position. And if you hold to this position, you're gonna be really uncomfortable for the rest of the sermon. <laughs> Number four is the idea of Arminianism. Okay, here's what Arminians would teach. Most of you grew up in an Arminius church where they would teach that, that you choose God, therefore you go to heaven. That people who choose God go to heaven. People who don't choose God, they go to hell. That you choose God, then God saves you. That's an Arminius belief. Most of us probably grew up in an Arminian type church. This is an orthodox belief. Many faithful Bible Christians, scholars, pastors, and theologians hold this position, right? You could be a member of redemption and be an Arminianist. Others come from a Calvinist background. And so what is Calvinism? Calvinism say that God chooses who goes to heaven and God chooses who goes to hell. That God chooses you and then you are elect and you go to heaven or you're not and you go to hell. It's kind of like that game, Duck, Duck, Goose, but instead it's like heaven, heaven, hell. Um, so heaven, heaven, hell, heaven, heaven, hell, duck, duck, goose, duck, duck, damn, right? And... <laughs> And they would, say, they would say some people go to heaven based upon God's choice and other people go to hell based upon God's choice. And I'll be honest with you, at different points in my life, I've believed both. You can believe both and you can still be a member of our church. It would be really fun at small group to have that debate, right? <laughs> like the gloves come off this week in small group, come on, right? <laughs> Luckily, we're not having small group this week, so there you go. <laughs> and, and, and faithful Bible Christians and scholars hold to both positions and at one time or the other, I've held to both positions in my life as well. But the more I preach the Bible, the more I go verse by verse, line by line through books, the more I've just really not been satisfied with both answers. I believe the answer is somewhere in the middle, and that's a position known as a miraldism. What is a miraldism? It's single predestination, that God predestines everybody, and only those who repent go to heaven, and those who reject him go to hell. And that God, in his love, desires that everybody would be saved, but also we have a choice to respond or to reject. Yeah. And listen, here's the idea is this, is God doesn't send people to hell, people send themselves. Right. Is that through their blatant, willful rejection of the truth, through their denial of God's sovereignty and authority and wanting to live independent and autonomously apart from him, in the end, God just gives people what they ask for. If you don't want God in this life, you don't get God in the next one. If you don't want his blessings in this life, you don't get no blessings in the next one. If you reject God in this life, then God will reject you in the next one. Listen, God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves. Wow. 